103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Hello and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LP FM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today is Sunday, January 31st, 2021. I'm Larry Rhodes, or Doubter 5, and as usual, we have our co-host on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. Listen, I can't kill anyone. I can't make you fall in love with anybody or anyone fall in love with you. And no wishing for more wishes. No wishes. Oh, no, I'm going to do that. <laughs> Those are my three rules. Yeah. Our guests today are Doubtfire, George, uh, Boudreaux, J.W. Kennedy, and Buffalo. Hello, Buffalo. Uh, Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, and humanism and the sciences. And conversely, we also talk about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. And if if you get the feeling that you're the only non-believer in Knoxville, well, you're just not. There are several atheist, free-thinking, and rationalist groups here in Knoxville, and we'll be telling you how you can connect with them right after the mid-show break. Also, did you know that there was a streaming call-in atheist video show broadcasting here from Knoxville? Did you know that one, Ben? Exactly. I'm glad someone's finally talking about it because yeah. that's how they're putting the microchips in the vaccines. <laughs> and uh, if TV you look show? really close, you can see it's everyone's in on it. It's all a conspiracy. We got we got to do something about this, guys. I'm serious. I, oh, my Twitter account got blocked. Oh, never mind. Never mind. We're good. Oh, Larry, you're on mute again. Anyway, as Larry figures out his audio issues, you're on mute, my buddy. Uh, if you would like to interact with us during the show, go to Facebook and search for Digital Free Thought Radio Hour page. Use the messaging function to send us questions or comments. Uh, what's our topic today, Wombat? Hey, today we're talking about cultural hijacking. We got a full stack of people on the show today. I want to do what my favorite thing is every episode to do, if we can do it, if we have enough time for it. And that's a quick, super, super fast, super, super check-in. How you doing? Life story update since last week. Scott, how you been? Oh, man, I'm doing great. I got more pieces. Hold on a second. Hold Show on me second. the cool stuff. Show me the buttons. Uh -huh. he's, cool he's setting up a whole home studio. Yes. So this is the latest one. Okay. Whoa. Oh, oh, that yeah. is a cool looking thing. That's a cool one. Huh? <laughs> That's a cool looking one. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. So we've been just building and building and building. So. Hey, and we're looking forward to playing your music during the break, too. Yeah. Yeah. Here buttons. George, the second one out of two. How you doing? What's going on with uh, you? I'm doing You're on fine. Mute, Buffalo, I, we got we got the name set up. George, get yourself off mute. What's going on with you? It's George two and a half. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Um, How are you doing? That? Since last week, right? I can go with Buffalo. I've got my Buffalo shirt on. That's what I want. <laughs> exactly. George, how you been since last week? Well, I, I had to go shopping a couple of days ago. So um, as many people who are just tuning in don't know, <clears throat> I'm located right this moment, halfway between Knoxville and Chattanooga, Tennessee. And here out in the boonies, I went shopping uh, yesterday at the most expensive supermarket in town, and I'm happy to report that I only passed two people who were not wearing masks yesterday. That's an improvement. And that's about all I have to report. Nice, 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 nice. How's your arm feeling? Didn't you get vaccinated? Um, yeah, I, I got vaccinated against COVID. Nice. Um, about a week and a half ago. My arm's been fine. The okay. experience was very good. I think that... Um, Everybody who was involved in administering the vaccine uh, behaved very professionally nice. and co competently. And I was very impressed with um, the, the performance of my county's health department. Nice. Speaking of biomedical half-breeds, Boudreaux, I know you got something in your arm, too. You're looking forward to a, uh, another uh, blast of, yeah. of antigen. What's going on? I'm, I'm signed up for number two on ththursday and it's uh i'd like to say it's a blessing um <laughs> yeah. no, I, I feel really really grateful I, I i got pushed up in 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 the line i think really just for testing purposes but 
Um, sure. But since Scott's showing off his cool stuff, I've had this up for a while, but now you guys can see it in the camera. I have a shelf on the drop ceiling uh -huh. in, my, in my basement so that I can put things up there when I'm on the elliptical. Oh. I, think I, might, I might be the only person that has a shelf just way up on a drop ceiling. <laughs> oh. Fair enough. That's pretty cool. That's pretty there cool. Nice. Nice. That's your cool stuff. Buffalo. Good to see you again. You got, you're all decked out in the Buffalo gear. Nice to see it. Nice to see it. Uh, how you been since last week? Uh, I've been fine. I get my, uh, my second dose on Wednesday. Nice. Nice. Yeah. So, that doesn't mean you're immune, right? Like you still have to wait a couple of weeks and it just greatly reduces your, 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 your chance of getting sick or like actually having it be a big deal. It doesn't make you bulletproof or make you a better driver, all that stuff. Right. Is that it accurate? Certainly doesn't, it, it certainly does not in my mind. And I probably will never know unless I get tested for antibody titer. Okay. Very, very cool. But, very but cool. it doesn't matter. I still follow the other rules. Uh, uh, strictly and um, and try to do my part and move toward herd uh, immunity. Nice. Thank you for doing your part. Also, uh, weird question. I'm just going to take a weird back seat. You got that shot on your arm, Eric. Does it, did have, has that affected your drum playing at all? Like, huh? Uh, good, good question. But no, uh, any soreness? Not really. Uh, no? Volleyball and drumming. Volleyball. Okay. Yeah. Uh, no, but I am going to go rock climbing on Friday. So I'm going to let you know how that goes next week. Yeah, yeah, that's going to be an interesting thing. That's more of a mental tough. thing anyway, though. JW, yeah. it's been forever since we'd seen you on the show. You're looking great in yes. that blazer. How you been? Thank you. Um, I've been all right, just moving right along, um, living life. I had COVID back in November, and I yes. think it's been since before November since I've been on the show. Yeah, you've been out for a while. You've been sick. We're glad you survived. Also, yes. you have various degrees of camouflage going on right now. Like, I can't see your forehead. Uh, <laughs> people would know that he's wearing. Yeah, like it's a just a camouflage. Can't just a camouflage. <laughs> but he's got the 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 professor blazer on at the same time too. So like, there's there's so many messages going on here. It's, he's so I just threw it on. I thought it would look better than just a black t-shirt. But, you know, I'm the guy who eats pizza for breakfast. So just don't not <laughs> don't be impressed. Don't there's nothing wrong with pizza for breakfast. First of all, uh, that's blasphemy. Yeah, you should totally eat breakfast pizza for breakfast. Uh, so Larry, J W, did you wait it out at home? Uh, yes, yes. I um, I have three roommates, and not a single one of them got it. Nice. Very good. Very good. I, I quarantined immediately once I, I had a fever that Sunday morning. I had actually cleaned the apartment the day before, um, just just out of it was, a, it was cleaning day anyway. And so once I had the fever, I notified everybody immediately, quarantined, and um, then I didn't find out until tuesday afternoon that i had it but i had already been quarantined for three days and then i did the finished out the quarantine had some people i know deliver me some things so i still plan on getting the vaccine as well nice good so. right, right. speaking of that larry when you get, you get yourself in line you know you qualify what's going on with you well now? i don't really according to the knox county uh, guidelines uh, i'm one ac something like that um, one a one a three. Uh, <laughs> okay. Anyway, they're only doing people with uh, hard medical problems or first responders or people over seventy five. I'm only seventy. So. Oh my gosh! Listen, I know in your but past I you have a history <laughs> of sneaking into bars and being like, "One for me, please." I'm, I'm one of I got this. No, you, you, uh, well, I've signed up through the VA and I'm just going to stay home until they call me in. Okay. It shouldn't be too long. Okay. 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 Good, but I'm good. staying in, staying safe, playing computer games. Nice. 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 I've been holding up too. And I'm um, looking forward to the topic today as well. Uh, the topic of today is cultural hijacking. The reason why I want to bring it up, we had a guest on the show yesterday, uh, last week. His name was Elmo and he was from the Philippines and he was talking about Christianity and how much it meant to him. Towards the end of the show, maybe even after we had ended the interview, uh, we had talked about some of like the native gods of the Philippines, and he knew a lot of them. And Larry, you made the point that like if Catholicism hadn't found the Philippines, he would probably be telling us about those gods rather than the the, the Christian god. Right. And that was such a eye opening little thing in my head because I thought man, you could say the same thing for black culture because I can't name any black kings. I can't name any black gods. I can't name anything from like really Africa. But even America, 
can't name anything from Native American culture. Like we don't know any great Native American chiefs or political leaders before the pilgrims came. Like that's just been all lost. The culture had been hijacked on top of being hijacked, on top of it yeah. being hijacked. Even and today, just pure, just yeah, pure history too. Like I'm Scott Irish. I was making the point before the show. I don't know any, hardly anything about Scott Irish history, hmm. but I certainly know Jewish history because I was raised Christian. Exactly. So, I mean, studying the Bible, you study the Jewish people's history. Yeah, you don't know William Wallace, but you know Ezekiel and Jesus, right? Right. Right. And <laughs> it, basically, religion has hijacked my sense of history. Hmm. Uh, Scott, you were weighing on this before. What were you? What were you making a point about? Yeah, I was going to say, I was actually speaking to somebody earlier this week who was saying that they know Christianity must be true because our whole dating system is based on Christianity. So it's like, it's 2021, but 2021 since when? Since the birth of <laughs> Jesus. So that just proves it's true. So the Chinese right. calendar proves that the dragon god is real too? Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we mentioned the Chinese calendar and I was telling them oh, all the Jewish that, calendar. Jewish, yeah, calendar. The Jewish calendar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, si yeah. science has adjusted to that because yeah. they don't they don't say AD anymore. They say BCE before the mm -hmm. current era. Yeah. And it's funny that we would name the uh, weekdays after other gods. Mm -hmm. you know? It's a Georgian calendar with gods named after the Roman gods, like from mm -hmm. Saturday all the way to Sunday. <laughs> Saturday and Sunday actually are pagan gods, the sun and the moon, right? We, uh -huh. Larry, we did a show on this before, but like mm -hmm. Monday all the way through Friday are like obviously Frida, you know, Thor. Like these Dude, are, calendar. these are not, these are not Christian characters in the Bible, but yeah. it is a funny thing. <laughs> but you had mentioned that your wife was from uh, Oh, yes. Africa. Yeah. She's from Kenya. So um, in her tribe, they worshiped the God that lived on Mount Kilimanjaro. And this was way before um, it was colonized, that, that nation was colonized hmm. by the British, of course. And so Christianity and the missionaries came in and now the national religion is Christianity. And they look down on their, uh, the religions of their ancestors hmm. as a whole. It's kind of a shameful thing to do, but they some people do in secret she was telling me some people still pay homage they'll still trek up to kilimanjaro just for they'll say it's just for you know well heritage reasons sure not, not because we really believe it anymore but like that ancestral calling that sometimes right, you feel right. that it's just a way for. to connect with your you know culture or whatever i feel like the lack of a sense of identity is a is a considerable sense that we have a lot of people say we have a sense only five senses five senses i think we have way more than that and i think that sense of belonging or the sense of identity or the the idea of like even if i'm gone there'll still be a concept of me or something that i was supporting that will remain like that is a sense that we have for sure george i'd like to get your feedback on this you were raised atheist right do you yes, feel like any part of your current identity had been hijacked by like a religion by any aspect or do you feel f absolved from all of that oh well boy it's a there's so much to this really um as you may be able to tell from my accent i'm from new york and new york is unusual i think in the united states as not being founded on a religious basis. The city was founded for money, you know? It was the, the Dutch West India Company. It was strictly a corporate project. And if you've ever heard of the, the old uh, mayor of New York City, Peter Stuyvesant, he was a middle level corporate manager. And when the British came in and took, took over New York, which was st simply a, like a stock trade with the Dutch. Mm. Mm. Uh, Stuyvesant went off to be a governor somewhere else, you know, for his company. So uh, the place where I grew up did not have a, uh, a religious heritage, let's say the way I feel that Boston did or Philadelphia. And um, al although I, I grew up in Brooklyn, which which had been called the city of churches, I, I never saw any, you know? 
there, there weren't a whole bunch of churches around. There, there were some, but you know, it wasn't like they were like here where I live. Sure, yeah, where there's one on every block. There was one on every block, yeah. So, um, however, I feel whatever our it, it's like uh, Tyrone. My God, the the uh, the cultural robbery that took place on on your background. Sure, is, is just so immense to me. And, and um, you know, I, I just think about, like, how many languages are spoken in Africa, you know, and, and, and Swahili is so beautiful. I mean, just the, the sound of that language. I, so, yeah, just to, oh, who was talking? Uh, uh, just to weigh in on what George was saying. Mm. Yeah, I do feel like I'm, I have a missed opportunity, but I also feel like, I am just as invested in the American project as any other color of skin that's here currently. Yes, indeed. But it's also an interesting thing that even that concept has only been around for 1900s, like the very, very early 1900s when the Chicago World Fair like was like established like 1980, 1893-ish. Like we think like America has always been about Americana and, and Christopher Columbus and like all the founding fathers and Mount Rushmore and stuff like that stuff is new on the, on the grand scheme of things. Like those are fairly new institutions that were, that were raised, brought up, funded, built and, and instilled in children as things that are part of America. Whereas there were people already here. There was a culture that was already here. And I remember I was at the gym this morning and I was seeing like a PBS cartoon show about a bunch of Native American little kids playing with a bunch of friends and talking and about like, you know, the great, the great things about Native American culture. And I'm watching this and I'm like, this is brilliant stuff that's been here since we've been here or even longer than any of us have been here. My culture has been brought over here. So we, we reach out for stuff and if we can't find it, we'll invent it. And, and that's the new hijack, like the way how we can just make culture and, and, and force feed that as the new truth. And we can see that even affecting us today with like how easy it is to just give fake news out and for people to just accept that as fact and then move on with it. But I don't want to go off too off, off far off topic. Boudreaux, I'd like to give you the same question. Do you feel in your upbringing, because um, I know it wasn't like, you know, aggressively religious, but like, did you find any parts of your upbringing hijacked as as you grew up like hey why do we why do i think that who gave yeah uh, no good good question uh I, so i was raised catholic my mom was catholic but my dad uh is an atheist and he didn't identify to us as an atheist until we were older hmm. and i think it was something he did kind of out of out of respect to not influence us maybe Hmm. Uh, which is interesting because I, I, uh, it, I, am not, I'm not sure that it would have terribly because, uh, I was kind of coming into atheism on my own. Right. Uh, so I, I don't know. I kind of felt like it was, a, a uh, maybe kind of unfairly dishonest to, you know, to not know early on that, that my dad was atheist, but I, you know, I, I've thought a lot about how to introduce religion to my children. Hmm. So I don't fault them for it at all. It, it's plus that was in the seventies. So it's a bit different than, than today. Absolutely. So, where did yeah. you grow up? I'm sorry. Where did you, where did you grow up? Wisconsin, North of Milwaukee. Hmm. Yeah. So I moved to Kentucky when I was about 15, 14. The, like that. the uncle that raised me, um, grew up in the green Bay area. Green Bay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's more where my dad was from. Um, but a bit north, more north. But his um, last name is English. Did you know run into any Englishes? No, I'm so with blue eyes. No, blue eyes. Kennedy, no, no uh, he's they like to wear hunters by marriage and like he's, he's uh, by marriage, so. argyle sweaters. No, you don't know that. Okay, Very <laughs> I do. I, I do love the. Oh, you work at UK? Hey, you know those? Yeah, there's like yeah, so yeah, many yeah. thousands. Oh, you're from Kentucky. Do you know the Thompsons? I get that too. So, yeah, <laughs> but, but my my mom my mom is from uh, Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario, in Canada. So she's Canadian. Um, and, 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 uh, what I always thought was interesting, and maybe this kind of ties slightly into what we're sure. saying is my, my mom's family is very Italian. Um, I guess I, I think maybe they're from Sicily, uh, but my grandfather's name is Joe Bambacco and he was number seven because there were so many Bambacos in, in the Sault Ste. Marie area or the Sioux as they call it. And we would go up there and I would just see 
Italians, dark hair and, and cooking all kinds of food. Um, for the longest time, I thought Canada was Italian. Like oh. you know, French Canadian. Like I was like, no, Canada. It's not French. It's Italian. Like so, my view of of Canada was this this very this small town that was very very Italian. So. Cool. Scott, did you want to weigh in? Oh no, um, I, w- I was just going to ask a question. Go for it, it seems like um, it seems like with um, more African cultures, Christianity seems to be uh, really really um, accepted and. Like there's never a problem with that, but like I notice now in depends America, where you are, but yeah, right. Well, I mean, other than like Muslim or yeah, because if you're in northern like Nigeria, that, it's that's almost not, like that won't fly. Yeah, it's like the cultural gods. If you weren't colonized, you know, mm. or if you were colonized, mm. then that would be that's never a consideration. Almost like it's, but then in America, there's more of um, a uh, push to um reclaim you know the um african um traditions like religious spiritual traditions at least it Hmm. seems like it these days more so maybe i always wonder why is that i don't know you're probably gonna have to find some black people to ask (laughs) (laughs) i don't know i I would (laughs) i would say this i would say this uh the we say Christian, but Christianity in, in Africa is a completely different beast than Christianity as we think of it in the Western point of view. And there's no way a white Jesus would fly when you call him Yesu uh, Christi in, 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 like in, in the areas I'm familiar with where Christianity is popular in Africa. And so uh, it is an interesting thing. They also look suspiciously Italian, Jesus, uh, or Canadian, as Eric would say. And that's something... Uh, that's more cultural hijacking, like the image of Jesus and what he looks like. JW Kennedy, have you been hijacked? You wanted to make some points too. What do you think? Well, uh, fun fact, I'm sure quite a few of you already know this. Uh, most of the pictures and paintings of Jesus are actually paintings of one of the Pope's nephews. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. yeah. He had a great six pack, apparently. Well, or he just keeps <laughs> drawing them in. Uh, apparently, yeah. <laughs> Um, you can just Google it and you can see pictures of the Pope's nephew beside pictures of Jesus. And then there's some sort of articles. There's a few articles on the history of that. But Now, now Jaden, um, you actually do have a poignant story as far as hijacking is concerned. It does, religion did have a big impact in your life. It, it did. It was actually a, a very unhealthy obsession for um, and for the first eight years of my adult life. Um, but... Oh, I prayed this prayer at the beginning, um, around 18 or 19 years old. I said, God, I want to know you for who you are, not for who I want you to be, not for who I've been taught you to be, but for who you are. And I want to know the truth for what it is, not for what I want it to be, not for what I've been taught it to be, but for what it is. And at the time I was entertained, I was, I was open to entertaining the possibility of, uh, being raised in the wrong denomination, mm-hmm. but soon this this uh, this motto, this creed, actually ended. It took me to a journey that actually I ended up leaving religion altogether. Um, but I I went from uh, being raised Southern Baptist to more of a liberal Baptist in high school to um, I got I was into Calvinism. But it's, wow! It's, yeah, wow. I, I don't know. That's how much core. You, yeah, I don't know how much you guys know about Calvinism. It's main belief is that God controls absolutely everything, and there's yeah, no free that, will. Um, but they, it tries to fit that into uh, the biblical narrative, which doesn't work. You can't really fit reality into any type of biblical narrative. But anyway, um, I and then I went from there to uh, an even smaller denomination of Christianity called Messianic Judaism, and Ooh. what they called the Hebrew Roots Movement. Um, which most American Christians consider a cult because we believed that we should still keep the commandments of Moses along with believing Jesus is the Messiah. Um, and in our, in, in their defense, um, we had so many more verses to support our doctrine than American Christians do theirs. Um, and I learned in that this is where the main point comes in with cultural robbing. I learned in that, movement in that uh, denomination about an emperor called Constantine 
that um, I really don't believe, I think it would be very challenging for Christianity to exist today in the West if, if Constantine didn't do what he did. Right, he basically right. Christianized pagan holidays. Mm. Uh, I think he beheaded, beheaded some he of his family members. National, I mean, the national religion of Italy at the time. And his, yeah, his, and his, so uh, he's Empire. the one that made, he's the one that made Christmas Christian. He's the one that made Easter Christian. And they tried to make Halloween Christian by calling it Jesus Ween, but it really didn't stick. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, we. I, 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 I fool you not. <laughs> right. Wow. So yeah, yeah that's like, another example how it hijacks it. Yeah, if you celebrated Easter, or if you celebrated, you know, like Valentine's Day or Christmas at 25th of December, you are a victim. Not a victim, but you yeah. have been affected by hijacking. It's just a, sure, it is, it's a winter solstice. You know, they yeah. hijacked it for Christmas, yeah. and Easter was hijacked uh, the spring solstice. God, Santa's first elf was a demon called. Um, oh God, what was his name? What? How do we get a demon-like name? creature? Um, called the was it no krampus 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 there it is there you go there you go uh buffalo speaking of wings uh have how do you how do you feel if hijacking has affected your life in any capacity uh where do you think it's come from how would you describe it (laughs) well uh, i i I don't think i've suffered very much from it because uh i'm a first generation american my father immigrated to this country when he was 19 because he didn't have enough to eat back in Romania. And, um, but he brought his culture with him. And um, so until I was four years old, I spoke nothing but Hungarian at home. Oh. So very strong cultural basis. And we, we were, you know, we, we uh, joined with, we lived in a neighborhood with other Hungarians bordered by a neighborhood that was rich with Polish people and all the wonderful things they've contributed. And um, I, I have a very strong background. So, so I don't feel like I've lost very much myself. Now, that maybe the downside is that I, I haven't passed very much that, of that on to my children, and I feel guilty about that. Hmm. Well, the, certainly the food, the meals, uh, Kristen, my wife, Buffalo's daughter, uh, cooks a lot of Hungarian meals still to this day, and my kids love them. Okay. Yeah. And kapasta and... Um, yeah. It's like yeah. the idea of competing cultures are always going to be a thing, even if you aren't affected by them, just the, uh, the pressures of other cultures around you can make it such that it's hard to pass down your culture because it's, it's going to compete with what's the day to day for everybody else in their lives. And so I can see, well, and, I can see that as a really and, sad point. As soon as I went to English speaking school, mm-hmm. I didn't want to have anything to do with the language anymore. You know, I felt it's very ashamed. hard to rap in Hungarian. So yeah, I'll give you that. Yeah, you might want to just <laughs> yeah, it is uh, yeah. long words. It's very long words. It's like I have too many syllables and not enough yeah. notes. <laughs> but, but, but on the religious side, I was like, how do I do this? On the religious side, I was raised as a Catholic, and I was an altar boy for many, many years, and that all that stuff. Hmm. But my father uh, basically said, "Believe in God, but think for yourself." from the get-go. So I haven't really, when I got to the point where I was thinking by myself and I had his support in a number of instances where there was a conflict between the, the biblical version and, and uh, real life, he would just say, uh, well, what do you think you should do? You know, so. I'm going to ask this question and then we'll give it to Larry and we'll get back to like a full round table when we come back after the break. But Buffalo, question for you. Uh, you said, I don't really feel like I lost a lot of culture. I, I hang with Hungarians all the time in my neighborhood. I'm good. If you actually went to back to Hungary, like right now, or if you went to Hungary right now, would you feel like the odd man out? Would people look at you and be like, oh, look at this American guy in his Buffalo hat and Buffalo t-shirt. And he's, he thinks he can cook American. He thinks he thinks our, cooks our food. No, 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 no. Let me show you what a borscht looks like, you American boy. Like, do you feel like and that's happened yet? Uh, well, I did that. I went back with my dad, yeah. maybe 10. 15 years ago and visited the poor village that he was raised in. And I could still speak a little bit to the people. So I wasn't considered to be that much of a stranger. I think they looked up, they looked upon uh, us, my father and I included, uh, or both of us as, uh, as rich people. Mm. Uh, But I I think we were, we were very much accepted. And uh, 
So there wasn't very much strangeness about it. Uh, okay. But... Not bad. Larry, um, I want to hear what your perspective is on hijacking because it's probably going to take like 20 minutes anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, but I'll save you we the it. time. You can go yeah. to my website, my blog, and <laughs> say, read a, or my, buy my book and read the chapter on it, uh, How a Religion Hijacks Everything. Mm. Uh, it talks about how it hijacks the holidays and, the, and your culture, history, uh, your family, how they try to get you to call the priest, father, and yeah. the people in your church, brothers and sisters, and they tell you if you're family doesn't want to f want to follow you into the religion a lot of times they'll tell you to leave your family behind and you know it's just a lot of hijacking going on it's a, it's a, like i say i've written a whole chapter on it uh, go to digitalfreethought.com slash blog and read all about it nice i also found that words in our normal lexicon can be hijacked by religions as well mm -hmm. like oh, even yeah. the word i was trying to sing the song chariot in my mom's house, who's a Jehovah Witness, she's like, don't sing that, that's a Christian song. I'm like, it, well, one, one, it's not. That's a love song by Gavin DeGraw. It's not a big deal. It's like, <laughs> chariot is a Christian word, and I'm a Jehovah Witness, and I'm like, that doesn't even make sense. It's just a thing that that horses pull. But it's yeah. <laughs> been so connotized, yeah. and Lord really has been connotized. There's a lot of words that we that we feel like owned by other people, but they aren't, and we should fight when when that idea is brought up like we own family we own belief like it doesn't mm -hmm. we're not non-believers we believe in things too right. it's just we don't believe in a god that's it things to think about larry why don't you take us out sure this is the digital free thought radio hour on wozo radio 103.9 lpfm right here in knoxville tennessee and we'll be right back after this short break the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Dr. Five, and we're on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today is Sunday, January 31st, 2021. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to meet up and search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one? 
Start one. one. That's right. Another, um, so earlier in the show, we said we talked about the Atheist Video Show. Well, it was originally called Free Thought Forum Knoxville, and you can go to YouTube and search for those words and find their archives. But currently, uh, they're under the name of Free Thinkers United Coalition of Knoxville, also on YouTube. Uh, if you're interested in getting involved with this TV or radio show, just come to an Ask Meetup, go to our webpage, our Facebook page, or an RET page, uh, the Rationalists of East Tennessee. You can find them at rationalist.org and tell us you want to be part of our uh, video or radio shows. With us on the show today, we have Doubtfire, George, Boudreaux, J.W. Kennedy, uh, Buffalo, and of course, Wombat and myself, nice. uh, Daughter Five. Uh, we, where do we want to pick up there, Wombat? So Buffalo was giving us Hungarian lessons in Hungarian. So uh, this I is that. something I've always wondered. I know only one Hungarian house word. It's for a common household object. Can you translate this back into English, Buffalo? The word is ventilator. Ventilator. No, you I know cannot. I'll, I'll find it out for you, though. Let me Google translate it. It's for <laughs> fan. What a fan, oh, fan. What a fan. What a fan. What a mighty good fan. Oh, okay. What a mighty, what a mighty, mighty, mighty good, good fan. fan. Nice job, guys. Well nice played. Job. Well played, on that. <laughs> Why is ben it always feedback. a surprise? That's what I want to know. Why is it always a surprise? All right. So last week's episode was, is slavery wrong? Let me check my book. And we were talking to uh, Elmo, who was a guest uh, on the show, a Christian. And uh, what was interesting about him was that uh, very polite, very welcoming, but very standard in terms of like the beliefs of Christianity. But I also feel like if it was, it wasn't as staunch as someone who knows the Bible so well and is coming up with apologetics for it. It's more of like, oh, does it really say that? Oh, well, I never read anything like that. It seems like he's the kind of person that just needs to be critical when he's being exposed to some of the things that made us turn away from the Bible in the first place. One of them being slavery. And so uh, um, DK66 says, it's a sad day whenever there's a person of color who defends slavery on the internet. And uh, I get the point of view, uh, essentially, is like um, when we asked him, like, hey, was slavery wrong? He's like, well, I'd have to see it on a case-by-case basis, which is really unfortunate, especially ironic in that it was in a conversation framed around him questioning our morality as atheists. <laughs> and it's like in every case, we would say owning people as property is wrong. There's no, there's no explicit nature where that's an okay thing. It's always more right. wrong. <laughs> so uh, Dada's trade Trading room, friend of the show, many times uh, commenter, give us a really, really long comment. <laughs> and so basically, well, I'll do this. I'll tell you what, that is trading room. Um, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna read over this, and then towards the end of the show, I'll get everyone's feedback on this. But uh, it's essentially about morality and uh, the nature of how theists and people who aren't. Um, um, religious can parse the two, whereas you know theists will have to rely on what their God tells them. Whereas people who don't can figure it out for themselves, and even if they reach the same conclusion, it proves that you don't need the God route because you can totally do it on your own. And I think that's the main point. Uh, we were talking about cultural hijacking. We had a really nice conversation during the mid-show break. I want to return to it just a little bit. The idea of hey. You know, these things that I hold, these things that I believe in, these were beliefs that were given to me by other people. J.W. Kennedy, you were talking about Constantine, right? Yes. There were a lot of other impactful people that colored basically what was even in the the biblical book in the first place, like the, the meeting of Nicaea. Is that how you would refer to it? Like the people who oh, came Nicaea, about? Oh, uh, Nicaea, Nicaea. Yeah, there were a group it was like of the 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 council that basically decided what books should and shouldn't be, and it was a it was by majority vote. You know, I always you know we're taught in the American church that you know the Bible was given to us by God and it was brought mm -hmm. together by the Holy Spirit and decided and, and and yet it went through all these processes of you know I, Catholics have more books than we're you know but then then Protestants do and then. Um, and then there are some Christians who only read the New Testament. There are denominations right. like the Church of Christ who, who just completely throw out the Old Testament altogether when it comes to doctrine. It's just, 
my issue, this is one of the reasons in the list why I left and decided that it was just more rational to believe that there was no personal God involved in Christianity, is mm. that if there was, if there was, do you think that what's supposed to be the most important thing, his word, what he gives to us and what he tells us is right and wrong, how a man is supposed to be saved and all those things that we're preached to about, and yet he did, there is no evidence, zero, zero evidence throughout history that he, he made any action to protect it from corruption. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, you know. What about them Dead Sea Scrolls, Scott? Oh. You know those Dead Sea Scrolls, that proves everything. What about that? That's huh? right. Those Dead Sea Scrolls, man. They, they were uh, authored by a, a Jewish sect that was trying to escape um, uh, cultural hijacking, I think it could be argued, because they were a group called the Essenes. Well, you know your history, dude. Yeah, they 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 lived on the outskirts of um, Palestine in the hills area in the wilderness, so to speak. And um, yeah, they wrote down prophecies and wrote down um, copies of you know the Old Testament, the Hebrew Bible that they had, and um, you know they they were considered heretical by the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And I think there were even, I think there were even some arguments that John the Baptist was a, uh, a scene because he came from the wilderness dressed in, um, you know, uh, animal coverings, just like the Essenes did. Yeah. And they, and the Essenes practiced this new thing called baptism. Oh, which is kind of Hey, yeah. Pedro, what do you got? Uh, just the, uh, uh, the, pointing out the irony here maybe others see it too but we're talking about i assume we're talking about these these scrolls that were uncovered and science was used to you know 3d modeling to to unravel them and read them and translate them and all this and and just there's a bit of irony that we're having to use <laughs> science to make things more well it yeah. should be apparent yeah and, okay well not apparent. yeah totally um george i'm gonna i'm gonna head to you real quick just so everyone gets a chance to feed in on this but like the idea of like okay so you found a really old document so what why should i care why should i even take that seriously like you can tell me dead sea scrolls you can tell me council and nasia came together and came up with a, a series of books but why do i care why should i care well sometimes i ask myself these questions um because i would like to understand what these deluded people all around me <laughs> believe uh, because I, I live surrounded by them and they baffle the hell out of me mm. you know and they have they have a really strong influence over how I experience my life mm. you know? that's true so, so even but I keep trying and I, I t I, I'm very unsuccessful at this because I try to read the Bible and I keep falling asleep. George, you made a great point. Even if you are raised atheist, even if you don't believe in a God, even to your, your, your senior years, being in America means that you are living in the effect of, of a Christian shadow, more or less. Well, because, don't forget, too, that my background is Jewish on top of this. Ah, that's yeah. Then that has an effect as and, well, too. Okay, so, I mean, my mother and father were raised in the Jewish tradition, one mm. of the Jewish traditions, and I, to, to tell you the truth, I'm not quite sure which one, but um, uh, so I feel very baffled, for instance, here in my town where I live. As the county seat, it's got a bunch of supermarkets, and two of these supermarkets, the expensive ones, have Jewish food kiosks. Okay. And yet the only Jewish uh, religious facilities I can find around here are the phony ones. You know, the evangelical Jews. They're not Jews. I don't know what they are, but, you know, <laughs> <laughs> they're not the, any kind of Jews that I grew up around. So, because mm, 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 mm. they didn't exist when I was a kid. Jews for Jesus is a, is a, you know, a relatively new phenomenon. So, mm. um, but you did, I guess my takeaway was like, even if you tried to, even if you're far removed from religion growing up, you still feel the effects of it because the people who decide the rules in this country have religious backing, have, oh, to, yeah. have to appeal themselves to religious lobbyists and stuff like that. Uh, uh, JW, raise your hand. What's up? 
Well, a moment's kind of uh, kind of passed now. Uh, Go for and it. I, you can bring I, it back. Well, I, I was uh, I, I've heard of Jews for Jesus, and I, I did read some of their material when I was uh, religious. Um, well, I was just going to say to the baptism thing. Um, it was actually an evolved ritual. The original ritual was called mikvah, and it was a pool that they put outside of the temple um, that you're supposed to immerse yourself in before you go and enter the presence of God, which it's supposed to be some sort of cleanliness thing, but it's clearly a placebo. I mean, think about how standing water where hundreds, maybe thousands of people go there to just immerse themselves. That's going to be the most disgusting cesspool. Oh my God. Uh, no. Before you go well, now we're thinking temple. about it because of COVID, but yeah, there used to be a time where you could shake people's hands and be like, Oh, that's, this isn't normal. Yeah. Why is, why is it green? Oh, it's the spirit of God. Yeah. They're yes, kissing God. each other. That's don't they know about germs? Do they? Well, with the Essenes, the uh, baptism was just required for a change of heart. It didn't really, Really mean anything more than that but i think with john the baptist it was a sign of you know being liberated from your sin and and i'm sure it went yeah, all uh, he i think he was the first one of the first to have to do the mikvah outside of the temple area like in a river right. somewhere that's what i was just saying yeah okay oh, yeah. Yep. i'm gonna double that, that was pre that was pre-lister and pasture and people didn't identify with germs and disease and so yeah that can sort of be excused i think so I'm going to devil's advocate. I'm going to throw this one out to Larry. I actually think that um, cultural hijacking has made it easier to be an atheist because we know how easy it is for uh, uh, someone who's about to be an atheist to just be like, well, I'm spiritual. I'm just going to pick the next culturally acceptable thing. So I don't have to be, don't have to be a label atheist. I can still say I'm religious, but I can at least pick the next thing. Buddhist, crystal, universal yeah. connection, all that stuff to uh, make you feel good and warm and, and not uh, look like an outsider. Uh, uh, but, uh, the buffet of religions around the world, you can pick the one that currently suits your spirituality mm -hmm. as it were. But cultural hijacking has been like, we're going to take all these gods, all these gods, all these gods, take them off the table and just make it one thing. It's the one thing. And that way atheists can just be like, well, your one thing doesn't make any sense. You're right. <laughs> one thing and then it's like oh you made this somewhat simple because every like it's the most popular one it's like wow like if i don't believe in this one thing i'm 70 percent not on board with like more than half of the religions around the world that's great you've made my job so much easier as an atheist yeah. well a lot of times you, you'll talk to deists and they'll say you know I, I believe in a god because i want to believe in a god i've heard I mean, that at least they're honest you know they're just telling you up front you know it's yep. something i want to believe in Yep. And there's no reason not to, they say. So, okay. Uh, deism doesn't, I don't have a problem with that because it doesn't have any dogma. It doesn't have a book telling you what you should or not do and not, not to do. It doesn't have any commandments. But uh, it still allows you to think that a supernatural being created the universe. We don't know mm. anything about that being. He doesn't care about us or keep an eye on us or anything. Of course, we don't, wouldn't know. But there's no dogma, so it doesn't interfere in our, our, our lives per se. So I, I, have, I would I would add a biological element here. Go for it. I, I believe I believe in believe in belief genes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I that I think be. that we have propensities, hmm. and beliefs are part of those propensities. So everything everything in science, right, or just about everything is on a Gaussian curve. Okay. And and, and uh, so that means a, a distribution, a variation, uh, and ultimately in a biological organism, that means differences in the DNA. And yes. so there's no reason for me not to believe that, that there are people who have sets of DNAs, not yet identified, not yet connected with belief or propensity to believe, and that these people have more of the expression of those genes than, for example, I do. Yeah, and, and yeah, therefore that, that's the context I put. Yeah, you, so you're saying it's nature. It could be nature, not nurture. But I, exactly. I, I personally believe it's more nurture. But I wish it was as natural to question and challenge our own beliefs as it is to believe something. Yeah. Right. Well, you know, Richard Dawkins uh, was the one that he, he came up with a hypothesis that you know because uh, magical thinking, you know, like when our, our early ancestors in in the in the bush saw the rustling of the bushes um you either thought it was some spooky demon behind the bush that was out to get you or, or it could be the wind and those who thought it was the demon behind the bush would run away and those people could live to talk about it whereas the science-minded people says oh we don't know what it is so there's no reason to run 
and then they might have got eaten up by a lion or something like that. And so it just seems like we are the ancestors or the descendants of the people that ran away from the rustling of the bush. Yeah. So that magical thinking kind of got passed down through, um, you know, the generations to make us who we are. And we're all kind of prone to beliefs and magical thinking to some degree. Well, we know other minds exist. I mean, we look around us, see other people and other uh, writings, and, and we know animals have minds. So we tend to project them where they aren't as well. There you um, go. And we always look for an explanation. So what better explanation is that something or somebody is causing it? That's right. I also do think what Larry was saying, that the way you're nurtured has a huge impact on the way that your thought process operates. And I think, um, you know, no one's raised to be a misogynist. No one's raised to be racist. Those are things that you pick up from your environment. And one of the things I want to be absolutely clear about is like the, 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 everyone is a little bit racist and that's okay. <laughs> it's the, it's a, from my opinion, it's like a salt. You put it on food. It makes jokes funnier. It makes movies like easier to deal with. Keeps your blood pressure low. It's the people who put way too much salt on it. It's like, that's too much salt. It's like, well, my grandfather gave me this salt. It's like, that doesn't mean you got to put it on everything. Calm right. down a little bit. So I've never heard that analogy. I like it. It's pretty good. And the flip side are the people who are like, well, I don't put salt on any of my food. It's like, well, you're just very boring. Like, I don't want to tell you anything. I don't want to eat your food. So like the people who say like, um, I am not gullible because I'm genetically disproposed not to be that's, that is something where it's like, Hey, at least consider that the, the gullibility gene is right next to the self delusion gene. And you want to make sure that you're at least aware that these two things have a really big impact. If they, if one exists, it's likelihood that the other one exists. I don't know if there is, a oh, gullibility thyself. Gene, but I want to be aware that those are it's very easy to to convince yourself that you're right in this world yeah. and that's I think just it's really possible i think it's possible to transcend your uh, natural inclinations to be tribal or to be magic uh, a magical thinker or something like that because i used to be um, a magical thinker huge same and, with me yeah yeah and, you know you just have to train yourself to be uh skepticism isn't something that comes natural hmm. so you have what, to train. what is magical thinking uh, leading towards supernatural excuses to explain things, things that can't be tested, yeah, things that can't be falsified. You basically explain uh, things with no explanation. You know, God did it. That's not an explanation. It doesn't yeah. give us any information. You give us uh, an answer instead of an explanation. Yeah. Right. I will tell you something that was really good. When I grew up, there was a show on Fox called The Max, The Masked Magician, where it would basically tell you how every magic trick was done. And I remember watching that show, and I was like, this is ruining magic for me. But then... <laughs> When I realized how hard it was to do the trick, mm -hmm. magic went from its skill. Exactly. Skill. Magic went from like this weird, ambiguous, you know, entertainment to like, this guy's good. He did like the whole card lift. He mm -hmm. he did a little pass pull here. There was probably a string there. This guy really is a good engineer. And I respect no, this on a technical level. And at no point did his hands leave his arms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the same thing with me with um, science and learning about how reality works. Like when you really look into deep sciences and hard sciences and stuff like that. Like I used to think that science is ruining religion for me and it's ruining spirituality for me but then when you really look at nature and reality and how things work and what we come to find out it's actually a better story than it's religion. so much better yeah, yeah. understanding is so That's much better than better. belief it's on top of it. so buffalo's well, inclined first of all we go. you go for it from, it starts from modesty and, and that is the scientists realize that he doesn't know we don't know anything uh, absolutely everything about anything exactly. sure that's and quite Buffalo, different from religion, isn't it? Or belief in a deity. <laughs> Absolutely. Buffalo, you made the point that you almost look to nature as if there was ever going to be a God worth worshiping, it would be nature. Is that something along the lines that you had mentioned before? Am I using those? No, words I, I think, uh, uh, first of all, on the believe, believe in belief genes thing, it's, it's a gradation. And I think we, we very, like, just like everything else, you take a single enzyme from your body and mine, and they're not mm -hmm. exactly the same. There's variation, a great deal of variation. People are not one, one being, or as the doctors say, if we look so different on the outside, why do you expect this to be the same on the inside? Mm -hmm. so, so there's a gradation in all of this here. But I, I think, it, and if you believe that, then the extreme believer, the person that will believe in anything, is way at the end of, 
of the Gaussian curve, not at the exponential rise part of it. And the majority of people are in that, that uh, 60 percent right. in the exponential rise. So everything's a gradation. Um, and uh, and uh, that's why I think that nature does have a real part in this. Nurture, yes. And of course, they're all working they're back and forth with each other. Mm -hmm. But I, I really think that extreme be, people that believe in uh, are have a, a very high potentially having a high expression of, of, a, of sets of genes that are not yet identified. I would love, in the, given that we can identify the genes, they have not been identified and we don't have evidence for it, I would love to have that belief once I have a good reason to have that belief. Until then, I would feel like I'm in the same pool as Dias, where it's like, I yeah, want to believe would, this, uh, but I have so no evidence. You would never believe it. it. And I would claim that I believe very, very little. I conclude. I don't believe. Well, Eric, what do you got? Yeah, uh, um, just kind of something got me thinking, uh, and I'm having maybe slight internet issues, so apologize if I cut out. No, you're right. But, but uh, maybe even in contrast to what you said, Juan, but earlier, something I read recently in thinking about raising children, right? I've got two young young kids. Um, how much of a role am I going to have on the in, in the people they're going to be? You know, my nurture. What how, what's the percentage of of that versus the uh, the nature and one of the uh, podcasts I heard on this and something I read really says, you know, a lot of it is nature. And then, of course, with my thoughts it's on free will for these we kids, just lost him. That's okay. He'll come right back. Keep going. Okay. Right. Am I back? Yep. Okay. So the the the, the thought is uh, uh, the the genes that my kids have is the nature side. And if you know my thoughts on free will, the nurture mm. that I give these kids, I'm not actually in control of. They come from my genes. Mm. So I really, I, it kind of feels like a, I, most of it, 90%, something like that is what I hear is, is uh, nature. Yeah, I would, I would always wary, I'm always wary of the idea that we are fundamentally different from each other. When we can see from this COVID vaccine, we can see from just the human condition itself that we are far more similar than we are desperately, you know, distinct. And so it's just, it's not a, a question of ingrained potential of like, who can learn more? Who's a better, who could be a better president? Should these groups of people who have these sets of, you know, sexual organs be better at leading people than compared to other people? It's like, no, I think if we invest in the society where we treat people as equals and, and, and give everyone free opportunities to, to learn and, and, and take the vocations that they want to work for and foster curiosity and critical thinking, anybody can do anything. And so I love the idea of like, if someone is gullible, critical thinking can make them skeptical. If someone isn't, doesn't know how to change out a carburetor on a car, you know, a half hour YouTube video can probably teach them how to do that exactly. And it's not so much a, a genetic loss. It's just a question of, can we invest the time, nature as a society to get them on board with, you know, asking the right questions and anybody can do that. And so I think if anything, if anything, if there is that genetic, you know, limitation, nature is the thing that can take us, the nurturing, the nurturing is the thing that can take us past any sort of limit. JW, what do you got? This is kind of spooky. Um, I didn't meet my father until I was 24 years old. And when I met him, my, everybody on my father's family uh, was really, uh, it, was, it was just really strange because I, I sat like he did. I had a, uh -huh. my personality was very similar to his. I had not met him in my whole life until I was 24. Uh, my BMI was the uh, body mass index was very similar to his. And so I think there's a lot more to be learned, um, where the whole nature nurture is concerned. I, I just, it's it still, it puzzles me. I don't know why that is, but I, without meeting him, I still, I, I even some of his habits Yeah, and it's just like, wow. You know, epigenetics. Yeah. Epigenetics yeah. Is, a, yeah. is a fascinating, think, fascinating field. I would agree that if you share the same phenotype, what's comfortable for your dad to do through force of habit would probably most likely be what's comfortable for you to do as well. Though I don't think you would have the same fashion sense. I think that's uniquely yours, JW. So congrats on that. Uh, Boudreau, where's your podcast at, man? Where can we find your stuff at? Man, we're being lazy with our, our uh, <laughs> podcast. We did record one. Uh, we're fighting over who's going to edit it. and uh, uh, But we're also talking about doing another one. 
Um, but I will have the song. I think we're at our final mix for our original song. Nice. That, um, I should I should uh, have that for you soon. That was fun. And then I my reached... last last comment on cultural hijack. Every yeah, Christmas, yeah, I go for it. Every Christmas I think about this, but uh, Leonard Cohen's Hallelujah mm-hmm. is always paraded around as this Christmas song and this religious song, and it's just not. It's, it's dark. about sex. It's, yeah, isn't yes. White Christmas the same thing too? It's like a deliberately secular uh, Chris, uh, Christmas yeah, song, yeah. but people don't realize so. that. Mm-hmm. Uh, hijack. Buffalo, last word on Nature Nurture. What do you got? Well, I would just say that again, it's it's a gradation. That's not that's not a. Uh, you, I don't think you can take any single trait and put it in the nature column or the nurture column. They're inseparable. But I think that I really think that some people have more propensity to express one side than the other. And maybe it changes with age because, because too, I, I find myself thinking and about things much more the way my dad did uh, the, the older I get. Maybe that's because I'm, I'm, I'm 77 years old now, and so that may have something to do with it, too. But cool. things change. Everything's changed. Everything's on a, on, on a variable scale. These things we're talking about are on a, on a tremendous variable scale. Nice. That's why I hate secular religion so much. Is you know how can you believe something that's been so divvied up? George, what's something we should check out by next week? By next week, huh? By next week, yeah. What's <laughs> one thing you think we should check out by next week? Well, I like a book called Tales of the Dervishes okay. by Idris Shah. It's um, Sufi teaching stories. Each one has a hidden message. Nice. I kind of like that. Very cool. Scott, you got some music going on. What's the music that we're going to be playing over the break? You want to do a quick intro? Uh, uh, this is, this is what is it? Wozo Radio. Uh, and we've got Scott Williamson. He's playing music during the break. This is this was his latest jam. Why don't you tell us a little bit about it? Oh, yeah. Just um, music that I put together. Um and I hope you enjoy it. You can go to um, dubshine.bandcamp.com to support me if you like what you hear. Download something and support an independent uh, musician. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah, we're going to be playing his track over the break today. Uh, Larry, you can uh, before I have it to you, my Let's Chat, you can find myself on YouTube. You're probably watching this already. Feel free to leave a comment. We'll go over it during next week's show. Larry. My own content is on digitalfreethought.com. Be sure to click on the blog button for our radio show archives, our atheist songs, and many articles on the subject of atheism. Uh, my book is called Atheism. Wait, What's you wrote a book? On? Why don't you tell book? us anything about it? <laughs> Larry, Larry, Larry. Well, if you, you wonder keep, about atheism, you keep it writing tells books you about it's... cell phones and cough drops. I want to know about atheism. <laughs> Have you wrote a book about atheism? Can you tell me what it's about? Like, is it's, there anything like it's that? It's called me? Atheism. What's it all about? That's it's available perfect. on Amazon. <laughs> uh, if you have questions for the show, you can send them to askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org. Uh, if you're having trouble with leaving re- your religious beliefs behind, you can go to recoveringfromreligion.org. If you're watching this show on YouTube, you can be, I mean, be sure to like and subscribe. Uh, this has been Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life, and we'll see you next week. Say bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.